Hello, it's Julia Leggett Art here. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, welcome to all my new subscribers. I really am grateful for you joining me. Um, for anybody that isn't subscribed, it is free and uh, it'd be really helpful for me if you subscribed and also gives you uh, easy access to uh, what I'm up to. Right, well, in one of my last videos, I dyed some old bed sheets uh, with watercolour paint. I don't know if you remember me doing the um, yellowy red coloured one. I did a sheet and I have since ripped it into four bigger squares. I was quite pleased with how it turned out. Um, if anything, I think I went a little bit too liberal with the um, the ink and it uh, gave me quite a lot of red but um, it's dried beautifully and I did use some gold watercolour which does show and it might not show on the video but it does have a little bit of a twinkle to it so I was pleased um, with that. Uh, which side is that one? That's that way. Uh, now I started some work on one of the pieces. I uh, was working away at this last night and um, I did say also to save your threads and cottons and things when you're actually doing um, projects. Um, this is another little bag of cottons that I've got. As you can see it's just all, there's even little scraps of fabric in there as well. Um, but I save all my scraps and reuse them which I've done in this project here and as you can see I've laid down some of the cottons and then placed just an ordinary standard netting over the top. This is very cheap to buy, I think this is a pound a metre. So I've got all different colours but I found that the white is probably better otherwise it obliterates but uh, any colour is okay but I'd just like to see the cottons through there. Now I did machine stitch my net on this uh, on this one here, but on the one I'm going to just dem demonstrate today, I'm going to uh, just sew it on directly uh, without uh, using the machine stitch. Uh, there isn't really a need to do that. I just um, did it for ease of time. Right, so I've covered the fabric as well in just ordinary running stitch and stab stitch in all the gaps, as you can see that, and then. This is how it ends up with the, the cottons showing through there and um, what I've done is to make it stand out and to make it what you say is I've sewn, tried to follow the cottons and sewn leaves really or they're actually leaves but you could choose whichever subject you wanted for that. You could do flowers or, or birds, you know whatever is your thing. For me I think Plants and uh, leaves and things are, are my thing. Uh, although I might try might try birds on a future one because I do like uh, stitching birds as well. Right, so I'm, I've got some cottons ready and I've chosen one of my um, thin wools to stitch with. And so that it's got some contrast, I've chosen a dark colour uh, to actually do the, the plant leaves. I haven't gone for black, I've gone for just a dark dark shade of green. Um, I've used green, yellow and red. I've tried to pick out colours that are in the cottons and on the fabric um, as I've gone along really. So I'll start with this one here. So I'm going to pop my needle in and then just stitch down. Now I'm doing back stitch here rather than running stitch so that you can get uh, the impression of a line. Now I'm just going to stitch a lot. I don't tend to use a hoop, but of course, if that's easier for you, of course you can use a hoop. The only time I use a hoop is when I'm doing darning and I find um, for that, I definitely need the fabric to be stretched. Now I'm going to follow around. the white fabric here and 
Cool, so we'll just take that round. Now, of course, you could use a technique using a, a transferring sort of technique to put your images on. But because I'm just following cottons, I don't feel that I need anything like that. I'm just going to follow that piece of white cotton there. And take that down there. I've been dying to get back to doing some stitching. I've been um, involved in a, a trail, which I think I mentioned on one of my last video, videos. And boy, has it taken up my time. Um, but it's finished now and it was very successful. I did sell some art, which I'm very pleased about because it was a big piece of art. So it's all very worthwhile. But you know, there's always such a lot of hard work, especially when you're on the team of organisers for it. It's not just about sorting yourself out, it's about sorting things out for everyone else. Um, but always worthwhile. And of course it was a virtual one rather than the usual walk around one. Um, which is inevitable at the time at this sort of time and to be honest I can't see trails coming back into their own where you actually walk around people's houses for a while I don't know what you think but I think not but anyway so I've been able to get back onto, onto some stitching I've got some more time and I've had this waiting to be done you find that when you come to the middle of the stitching it seems to be a thicker amount of cottons but that's quite attractive um, colour wise because you get some pretty colours coming through so you just keep stitching round as you can see getting some leaf shapes there and a bit longer and you can see on this one here I, which I'm going to do on all of them actually is I did a dark line of um, back stitch to make that stand out and I think that looks quite nice so I think I'll do it on, on the others as well so I'm going to do a set of four of these and then decide what to use it for. Um, I'm not quite sure yet. That's always the case with a lot of things really. I'm never really quite sure what I'm going to use them for but I just love doing them. But I have been thinking about a new project and I thought I'd do something which we could all follow. Um, called Ancestors and my family and I'll show you how I do the portraits in a simplified way so from some um, old pictures and we'll start putting that together but I might, I might put calico onto paper using um, some sort of medium and then stitch through so that it's a bit like um, a concertina book but with stitching on as well. I do like a project to be getting on with and once I get one there's no stopping me. I'm not happy until it's finished. Well, I hope everyone's had a nice Easter. It did um, snow a little bit here this morning but it was very brief and now the sun's shining. It is uh, a few degrees colder, but it's always nice when the sun's out. That one, I've run out of cotton on that one, so just turn over. Well, also, I wanna, there was one of my followers that was wondering what the back of my stitching was like, especially on the, the bed throw. Um, I haven't got it here at the moment, but uh, this is the back of this one up to now, so standard. Um, bits of cotton sticking out in the here and there 
but it, I'll add on a tack on a little bit and um, show the back of the, the bed throw but it looks very similar to the front to be honest right so I've made a start on on that one which is brilliant right so what I thought to do now might maybe do a bit more stitching on that in a moment is we'll start with the threads and take a piece of fabric right so I'm going to take little bundles where the cottons are a bit long I'm just I'm going to carry on with the circular circular sort of theme on this one because I think it's quite straightforward and easy I did think about doing hearts but uh, that would be quite easy actually once you've got your netting on the top just to stitch in the shape of a heart as you can see just randomly put your cotton down obviously you can have it as thin or as thick as you like there is another nice use of these cottons it's like using the water soluble paper and then you can actually make little shapes and fab fabric sort of motifs out of it so that's something maybe I'll, I'll do later on another video right so there we've got four bundles of cottons right so I'm just going to cut out just squares to start with as for cover so just put them over like that and then once I've stitched them on I then trim round the the net I found that's the easiest way to do it. To bear with me while I cut this net. Just one more piece needed. Put it on the same little piece all right that's that just move that out of the way it's sort of spreading everywhere right there we go now it doesn't matter if some of your cottons stick out of the edges um, it doesn't want to move the ones and it looks absolutely fine I'm just going to pin them because I won't have time to stitch them all on today in the video. Gosh, I've got, got a pin cushion without pins on. I'll have to go and get one of my other pin cushions. Just bear with me. a few more on on this one I've got a few pin cushions I have one sitting next to my sewing machine one downstairs one here I can't have too many one or two are gifts and um, this nice old one here which is um, Obviously got sand in and grit is uh, from an antique shop. Right, so I've just pinned those on and I've got some yellow cotton here or some yellow wool. I'm just going to do the first stitch round. Just poke those in. That's it. With the yellow wool. And again, just a running stitch all the way around. There we go. Well, I've done really well and I've not eaten too much chocolate this Easter. Not that I had that much, but I did have some quality street about, but um, I put it out of sight's way put it in front of my other half and um, he's chomping through it nicely which saves me eating it. 
is a treat, but um, I don't see it's that worth um, putting the inches on the waist just for a little bit of chocolate. And that's so you can see how we go, just stitching round. I will just demonstrate one and cut off the, the netting. I go round several times with the, the spiral right down even into the, the cottons. Take that pin off now. Another nice use for the cottons. If you, it's quite nice if you want to do something neutral, is to be selective on how you save your cottons, and um, if you're working with um, neutral creams and whites and browns, you could put those all together, and then you could make something a bit more tonal. Um, but it's definitely nice to have all these little bits to work with. Right, so that's done the first stitch round. Let's just um, put that over there so I can stick that in there. Right, so I'm just going to cut off the netting, start cutting that off. So just go round and snip that off once you've got the first. Take that pin off. Can feel a little bit fiddly, but um, once you've got the, the, the netting stitched on, so that's the first one stitched on, and then um, what I do is continue to go round with my cottons. I've got enough to go round again. I'll do. So I just do an outer row. And of course, if you uh, choose your colourways, you can decide on the different colours you're going to combine and get different effects. Now, straight away, as so I look at this one, this one is a little bit more yellow uh, than that one. This one has a lot more red in it. Um, and although there is quite a bit of red in, it seems to be under the cottons. So I'll probably go for a bit more blue and yellows on this. There's some blues inside the cottons. Well, to be honest, the cottons, there's, there's all colours. I mean, there's purple, there's pink. So it's really just a case of choosing um, maybe your favourite colours or, or what you feel will look um, good. And as regards the stitching on the fabric, I just thought it was quite nice to cover the fabric. And um, I just followed the circular motion uh, with the running stitch or canvas stitch. And, um, and then where there was gaps, I decided to do um, stab stitch or small stem stitch, which I think looks quite effective. Um, and it all starts to come together the more stitches you apply. Keep going around that. And there we go. After my stitching in a moment, I'm going to go out and enjoy a little bit of time in the garden. Probably only an hour or so. I'll just get some fresh air. There we go, so there's a, another row around that one. 
so I'll leave that one there and I'll do some more of that tonight I'll probably finish it while I'm sitting stitching tonight um, once I sit down at nine o'clock and watch the TV I soon get through a section like this so come back to this one could do a little bit more of this flower stem just put some cottons there you go it's a shame we haven't got um, somebody that threads all our needles for us I do cheat a bit because I make sure I've got quite a large eye when I'm on video so there'd be nothing um, more embarrassing than not being able to thread your needle while everyone was watching I'm sure we've all been there And this is quite a short needle that I'm using, which is perfect for back stitch. When I'm doing the, the running stitch, I like a longer needle so I can actually weave it through and get quite a few stitches done, done at once. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do um, just the stem for the leaf. So just stitch down the centre of the and I do tend to when I do my sketchbooks I do a lot of this type of leaves and I think it's just ingrained in me um, the shape of um, what I do and um, I notice that it comes out on quite a lot of my stitching work but I like it so there we go so I'll probably just carry on I think we all have our favourite things to do don't we so again just carrying on back stitching and that and what I'll do in a second is I'll go round go round the actual plant as well yeah just that adds something when you actually do the leaf pattern You know, I hate to waste anything. It's amazing what you can do with bits that you'd normally throw in the bin, like the bits of um, cotton and the old sheets and things like that. You know, it's just it's just so much that you can do. I mean, now that the lockdown's coming sort of to an end, but um, we're still restricted, I just wonder how much sewing and things we'll all manage to do. I'm just going to start doing a circular back stitch in the dark green so it sort of circles the, the plant. Yeah, I think um, the lockdown certainly got me stitching more and I have become, it's not that I'm addicted to it, but I just find it so, so rewarding and relaxing and I just love to see what I can produce and I managed to get a slot in um I live in Derbyshire in a small well no in the Cromford Mills it's quite it's quite a lot of shops there but I managed to get a, a little unit in one of the makers shops and so it inspires me to do more because I can make things and um, sell them. Uh,